Hi guys, EBP Man here with Tablets for Me. And today we're going to do a tips and tricks video for the iPhone 6S. A lot of these features or tips are going to be focused on the uh, new operating system, um, the iOS 9. So they may apply to your iPhone 5, iPhone 6. And uh, what we'll do is if there's anything that is specific to the 6S, I'll make sure I highlight that in the tip. But these features, most of them will apply to any iPhone using uh, iOS 9. Let's take a look. One of the things that has changed with uh, iOS 9 is the ability to find your settings much faster than ever before. If you're coming from uh, an Android operating system, ecosystem, you'll find that this existed in the past um, in your previous experience, but now it's new to, to Apple. And that's the ability to search. So if I, for example, want to find information on my fingerprints, I can just type in um, what I'm looking for and it will find something. So you'll notice that as I typed in FIN for finger, it doesn't show up. And that's because Apple calls it Touch ID. So as I am typing in Touch, you'll notice that Touch ID shows up and then all I have to do is choose the, uh, the feature that I'm looking to configure or find from that search. So let's look at a quick and easy way to register your fingers and more importantly to get the most accurate fingerprint experience you can have with any device. So this technique applies not only to the iPhone but could apply to any phone that has uh, biometrics or fingerprint sensors. So the first thing we're going to do for the iPhone is we're going to choose add a finger. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our finger right on top of the fingerprint sensor. Now what I like doing is I like taking my fingerprint and getting as many impressions of it by rotating it all the way around. The reason why I like doing this and also um, um, I sometimes grab the tip of my finger here is because you're never going to uh, you're never going to touch your fingerprint sensor the same way. So modifying it um, is critical so that the software or the fingerprint technology is picking up every possible impression that you could have. Now if we hit continue, that's all it takes to add a fingerprint. Once you've added your fingerprint, it's um, pretty common to add a second, to add your thumb, or maybe to add a finger from your other hand. But what if one of those fingerprints is not registering well? How do you know, or how can you set it up so that you can easily identify which fingerprint you need to re-register? Today, uh, we registered one finger, and it was called finger one. Well, if you tap on it, what you can do is you can rename that. You can rename it the name of the finger, or the, the finger that you uh, register. So in this case, this was my index finger, and it was for my right hand. Now, when I hit done, I can see that if when I'm using my index finger from the right hand, it fails, all I have to do is delete this one and re-register my fingerprint. Now, once you've registered multiple fingerprints, um, you'll be able to have something that looks like this. And you'll clearly be able to identify which finger is registered. And in the event that you have to replace one of those uh, registrations, you can do that easily. Now, the other thing that you can do is establish that you can use Apple Pay with the fingerprint sensor, unlock your phone, and you can also set it up so that you can use it for the iTunes Store. So what I'm going to do now is just put in my um, password and uh, register it so that I can use my fingerprint to purchase items. So this feature is specific to the iPhone 6S series. So this will be the Plus as well as the 6S, normal. Uh, and it has to do with quick actions that are part of the 3D Touch function. 3D Touch is very similar to right-click on your mouse. And you can do this on Windows um, and a lot of the other uh, uh, programs that are on Windows have this feature where you can come up with the sub-menu. Now the tricky part of this is that if you press and hold too long, you actually get this little wiggly going on, which is something that you're used to with uh, iOS, and that allows you to reorganize your icons. So the 3D Touch is not about press and hold, it's about press and push. So I'm going to press and push, and you'll notice that when I pushed, I get another feature. If I press and push, oh, that's a wiggle, so you see how that was tricky, let me press and push. Now I get um, another um, sub-menu. For the camera, for example, if I press and push, I get take a selfie, record a video, record slow-mo, take a photo. If I press and push here, I could actually send a new message or even go to um, a contact that I had on my message board. So again, press and push versus uh, press and hold. This is going to work on a lot of applications, and I've showed you a couple of them. I showed you messages, I showed you the camera, I showed you uh, news, uh, and also phone. And it, this is going to be something that's going to become more and more prevalent with iOS apps. So as you're using um, the 6S, uh, experiment. 
Press and push to see if that application has a submenu or a shortcut menu and take advantage of it. That's one of the greatest new features of the 6S. Now, another new feature with the 6S is multitasking. And multitasking was, was always really there, okay? It's just a different way to get there. So, you know, we've all done this before, right? Where you do a double click and you're able to um, go to the different apps and they were organized a little bit different. You just have to go into the app that you want to go to. So, for example, I'm going to tap and I'm here. So I am right now in my settings area. And previously what you do is you would double tip, tap again and then you'd go somewhere else. So now there's something a little bit different. So let's go back here. Now, if you swipe from the left and what you have to do is you have to press, hold, and swipe. You get this menu to come up or the shortcut menu to go to another app. So here, for example, I'm on a web browser. I press and hold, and I'll swipe. It's a little tricky. you got to do it from the side. And you, you're able to switch over. So it eliminates the need to having to go and choose uh, that double-click in the center home button. Now, the one thing I will mention is that feature does not work here. So if I press and hold, let's see. Let me try it again. Notice how it's a little it's a little tricky. You have to get it right at the edge, almost at the black frame here. So you press and hold, and then you're able to bring it in. I've tried to make it work on the right side, and it doesn't work. So those of you who are righties or lefties, um, you know, you want to switch things. If you want to switch from, from this side as opposed to this side, you're kind of stuck with this uh, mode. And again, the key there is to grab it from the black frame that you have here, press and hold, and then you can move over and switch to another app. So that's multitasking in the 6S. Another new feature with the 6S is a feature called uh, Peak um, and also Pop. So a Peak is you want to take a preview of a link but not really go anywhere. So this is an email that I received and what I'm going to do is I'm going to press and hold, right, press, hold and push um, on this um, more info. So press and push and when I do that, what I'm getting is a preview of what that link is showing. So here I have what that link leads to. Um, I, if I push another time, what ends up happening is I go to the website. So that's a new feature uh, that's called peep and uh, pop. So again, one, all you have to do is uh, press and push once, and you'll be able to see what it is, and then you push again, and then you'll be able to go to that site. Another new feature that you have, and this is something that iOS or Apple users have been waiting for a long time. Android has the ability to have a back button. Uh, so you, on the bottom right-hand corner, you tap back, and it goes back to the previous app. Uh, just a couple of seconds ago, I showed you how to use that uh, peak and also pop uh, function. And now what I'm going to show you is that there is a back function too. That back function shows up here in the upper right-hand corner. All you have to do is tap it and it goes back to the app that led you to the hyperlink or photo that you just visited. So this next feature um, has been around for some time now in the Android ecosystem and it's great to see it make it over to iOS. And it, this is something that's available not just with uh, the iPhone 6s, but also with the iOS 9 um, upgrade. And that's the ability to do a flash or to do a burst of white before you actually take the picture. So in order to do that, you need to make sure that you've turned on flash. And you notice that I have it to on. Um, and once you have that on, you'll notice HDR gets disabled. But now what will happen is when I'm going to do the selfie, especially if I'm in a dim lit area, if you're at a club, you are just you know want to have a better experience, what will happen is this uh, screen will... Uh, blink white before it takes the picture. LG, for example, puts a white border around this so that you have that whiteness there, and then it basically um, takes the picture. And as well, there are several apps in the Android ecosystem that do this as well. But this is a real nice implementation. Watch how it works. So by getting that white right in front of it, it's going to give you a better picture instead of having that dark selfie that most of us are used to when you take selfies in a dark area. Another new function with the camera is called um, Live Photo. Um, in Android, it's the animated GIF if you're a Samsung user. And in order to have a live photo, you need to make sure that that little symbol is enabled. If, if this is off, you're not going to get a live photo. So when you press uh, Live Photo, uh, you notice it says Live. And I'm going to use the stylus as an example. Uh, so I'm going to press the Photo button, and then I'm going to move it out of the frame. So what it does is it takes the picture, but then it also uh, records some motion for a second. So here's the picture with the stylus there, and if I press and hold, you'll notice how it moves out of the way. And I also got some of my audio there, because it is the combination of a picture and a video, so you can hear me saying that. 
you saw how that happened. Um, again, I'll uh, have some better photos um, out there, um, sample photos of what this um, live photo looks like and how it works, but that's what you need to do in order to make sure it's functional. Now this tip um, is about power saving. Uh, the iPhone 6s does have a smaller battery than its predecessor and uh, many of you have complained about just overall battery life with the iPhone and there is now a low power mode very similar to um, power saving mode that you have in Android and to enable this you can go into the menu but why do that let's leverage Siri hey Siri turn on low power mode And what you'll notice is that um, it, it interpreted low power smoke, <laughs> which is fine because I did uh, fub there for a second. But it got the right setting, and you'll, you'll notice is that your uh, battery went from a uh, green to now a uh, yellow uh, kind of uh, color. And now what your phone is, it's in a, a mode that it will still function, but it's, uh, it's turned off uh, several features uh, so that it can consume less battery power. This is great if you're in an area, um, let's say you're in a school where you have poor reception or at work where you're not really using your phone all the time, but you have it on you and you need it just in case uh, there's an emergency. Um, turn on that low power saving mode. It's also found in settings, but I find it, hey, leverage Siri for that. And you can turn it off too, so let's try that. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Let's try it again. Hey Siri. Siri doesn't want to wake up. Turn off low power saving mode. Oh boy. Gotta love her. Turn off low power saving mode. All right. So now everything is back to normal. So this tip is a basic tip now, and this focuses on how do you get your battery percentage up there. This is important, especially if you're coming from an Android environment going to the iPhone, or if you've just never done it. It's pretty simple. All you do is you go into settings. Uh, you can search for it as well, but you just go to battery, and under battery, you have an option that says show battery percentage. If you also find that there are times that you find that your battery is being consumed too uh, quickly, one of the things that you could do is look at which of the offending apps are doing that. So here you see a breakdown of all the apps I have installed and which one is consuming the most power. So what you could do is either uninstall it or just recognize what's your power hungry app. Now additionally what you can see here is uh, Apple is um, suggesting based on your usage that you enable auto brightness to consume um, less uh, battery life. So you'll see some suggestions on how you can uh, improve your battery life. But in this tip, battery percentage is going to give you the percentage showing up on the top of the screen. New with iOS 9 um, on the search side, if you swipe over, it's not just um, applications that you use often, but it also focuses on contacts as well. So you can tap on any contact here to call them. And also it shows based on where you're at, if you've opted into location, uh, the services, what you could do is look at areas um, that are coffee places. And it's just going to show that up automatically for you here. It also is going to show um, news that is important to you based on you know your search patterns and what you look for. So this is a really nice feature if you want to especially check out gas prices or if you want to look at you know um, shopping venues. You could do that really quickly by going into this area. There are also some new enhancements in iOS 9 for photos. So if I were to tap on a photo and I'm looking at a photo and I want to do away with it, all I have to do is swipe down and it's gone. Another feature that's um, available now with uh, photos is also the ability um, when you're looking at a photo, and we'll pick up this generic photo, um, if I tap this uh, upload icon, what I could do is I can actually choose to hide it. Uh, now keep in mind, if I choose to hide, hide is not going to make it uh, encrypted, um, completely hidden. It's just going to move it. And you'll notice here, this photo will be hidden from moments, collections, and years, but still visible in albums. Um, Samsung and some of the other phones have the ability to do uh, a private mode where it um, actually requires a password to see it, but this is a good enhancement because it takes it out of just common view. Again, um, the ability to be able to hide your photos. Now the other thing um, you'll find is that there's going to be a lot of sub-menus that are available um, inside of um, a lot of the actions that you're taking into place. And some of these sub-menus uh, could be fine really far over to the right. Um, like you see print, uh, for example, or more, or even hide. Any of these items, if you press and hold on it, you can actually change the order 
and drag it into a new place. And it's going to be sticky, so it's going to stay there. You can say instead of having it all the way over there, you can put it over here. So again, experiment with the screens and all of the functions and just personalize it to the things that you use the most. Creating attachments has also improved. Uh, previously, you'd have to go into Photos to do an attachment. Um, now, with iOS 9, you can press and hold, and then you need to get this submenu. All you have to do is go over to the right, and you'll notice that you can do other things. You can insert a photo or a video, add an attachment, and uh, this is really useful because before, you'd have to be in Photos to uh, send the photo. Now, all you have to do is choose what you want, then go into the photo that you'd like to add and do that, or if you have uh, your iCloud level, um, what you could do is immediately go into one of these applications um, that are in, or even your iDrive, to uh, pull a file and send it as well. So a nice addition because it makes it a lot easier from a workflow perspective to grab files that you want to share. Now this feature, while it's a beginner's feature, it's one that many people aren't really aware of, and that's the ability to um, access definitions and other functions when you're reading emails. So for example, here's an email, and um, let's say for example you had a problem with a specific word and didn't understand the word. Just by selecting it, you can choose define, and it's going to take you to a definition of what that word means. And you could do many more things, not just find the description of the word or the definition, you can search the web um, and you know do some other features here. So it's a real easy way to just look something up without having to leave the email that you're in uh, so that you understand more what a person's communicating to you. Another feature that um, you can do now in messages or in, in email is you can save attachments. Um, and it's really easy. So let's, for example, I wanted to save something that's here. All you do is press and hold, and you're going to get some uh, options. You notice I can do save an, an image. So if this was a picture that someone sent you, what you can do is rather easily just select it, save the image, and then just move forward. So making it a lot easier to manage the content that comes in your emails. Now this feature is a pretty basic feature, but it's one that I just wanted to share with you, and that is grouping content. Um, all you really have to do is press and hold, not press push, right? And then you could drag an item on top of another, and you'll be able to create a group. Uh, and you could call it whatever you want. In this case, it's assuming that it's navigation, because I have Waze and I have Pandora there. And, but you can name it whatever you want, just by going to the top and naming that. Um, I'm going to leave it as is, and I'm just going to hit done to get out. And you'll notice that things have been grouped. The system is still... Uh, you know, wiggling because it's expecting that I want to group more things together, then all you have to do is just drag whatever you want into a group and continue to drag. To get rid of a folder like this, all you have to do is drag every item outside of the folder and the folder will disappear. So you just grab whatever you want to remove and then drag it onto the desktop or this area here and it will, you continue to do that until that area disappears. And if you want to add something else to it, you can just do that. Deleting is also pretty simple. All you have to do is hit that little X and it's going to delete that program. So creating groups is something that I always recommend because it keeps your desktop pretty clean or, or your working area because some people have uh, you know rows and rows of icons and it just uh, and it sometimes it becomes pretty chaotic. So this is just a way where you can create groups. And by the way, any of these groups can exist here. So you can actually put one of these groups down here. To make some space at the bottom, all you have to do is you grab your icon and bring it over to the right slightly. And it's going to be a little tricky. Uh, but now I've moved that out of the way. And then I could grab this guy and then put him over here. And now it's in the bottom. I like doing this for frequently used programs. I just group them together. And then once I've done that, all I do is I tap. And then I have them all there, especially if I'm going to be on the road. So this concludes our tips and tricks segment for the iPhone 6s, uh, focusing not just on the 6s itself, but also on iOS 9 features that are available on several of the phones uh, within the iPhone family. So if you have any comments or questions or would like to suggest a tip, please leave it on the YouTube channel. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.